that has a very mild class 1 malocclusion um, with its lower canines being slightly linguaverted or the old term is base narrow. And when this dog closes her mouth, the tips of the canines hit the gum tissue just ever so slightly. So we're going to see if we can do a gingivectomy to create a ramp um, that would be similar to an incline plane using our electrosurgery um, as well as our round electrosurgery loops. I'm going to start just with this patient with a small loop and then graduate up to a medium loop to contour it the way that I want it. I'll start with the small loop. I've already um, essentially seen just where the cusp tip hits right in this area. And so I want to start my incline plane um, just a little palatal to that because I want this cusp tip when it hits where it's currently hitting to be able to flare to flare out into proper position. So that's what I'm going to keep in mind as I'm doing my gingivectomy. So I'm just continuing with this slope of the incline plane that I want where this tooth is going to be hitting the ramp. Sometimes on the smaller loops, you do have need to clean off the tissue. Another thing that helps um, is using your air water syringe. And every time you bring up from your electric pottery, just kind of do air water. Um, I feel that it kind of cools off the tissue and um, takes away that char. And that's just anecdotal. I want to stay away from the attached gingiva because I don't want to compromise the health of the adult teeth that are in, so I'm, I'm respecting that. I also don't want to get too close to the teeth um, and create any heat that would compromise the health and the vitality of those. Essentially, I'm just going to continue making my slope um, and, I'm, I, and I'm going to change to a bigger loop maybe to contour this a little further. I'm not going down to bone at all, I'm just staying along the gum tissue um, just to create a, a ramp. Um, you can also, there is a vessel that runs in between these teeth, um, so it's deep to it, so you may or may not hit it, but it's a branch off of the maxillary artery. Um, so if you do um, encounter that vessel, then you can um, cauterize as you're here with your electrosurgery um, or ligate if you were to need to. So I have changed to my medium loop now because I contoured um, in between the tooth just where I wanted it using my small loop. And that was just based on the, the size of this patient, um, the size in between the teeth. So now I'm just going to come with my medium loop and just contour on down. I'm just continuing my slope. And again, I'm all in the gingiva. I'm not going down to bone. Just kind of clean the tissue off. And then each time I take away some tissue, I'm just looking at my slope to see if, if it's in the area and kind of the depth that I want it. A nice thing to look at too is if you take, um, you know, maybe a pen or a pencil or um, a bendy brush, composite brush, I put that in the slope that I've made because essentially I want it to take the. Um, the shape of where that lower canine is going to go into. So I want to make sure I have it into a nice slope. So if I were to put it here and it sloped out that way, I know that I need to work on removing more gingiva here so that I get it to lay down more to a normal slant of the adult canine as it erupts further. So this dog is five months of age, so we have a chance for the canines to continue to erupt because they can continue to erupt, you know, from, from six to seven months of age. So this is kind of what I'm looking for with my ramp because that's the direction I want that lower canine to go in. And that's it. So that's essentially all for a gingivectomy that we're doing to act as a ramp for a very mild class one malocclusion that has lingual version or base narrow mandibular canines. So this is so mild we can do this option versus an acrylic incline plane in this patient.